let's uh, let's take a shot of him from here as he's coming out of the building after a day's work, huh? You know, I've taken pictures of big shots, movie stars, kings. I've never run into a ham like this one. Uh, what do you expect? Yesterday's an ordinary bus driver. Today he's going to have his picture taken, getting three uh, three page spread in Universal magazine. Tomorrow he's being honored at City Hall. It's going to affect him. A uh, big deal. He won an award as the safest bus driver in the city. Sure, sure, it's a big deal. It's the biggest thing that happened to a bus driver. Look, you all set? Yeah, bring in the man of the hour. Okay. Uh, Mr. Crandon, you can come in now. Oh, look, uh, make it natural, huh? Crandon, what are you trying to do? Well, I thought that would be a good pose, you know, for the cover of your magazine. Look, Mr. Crandon, this picture isn't going to be on the cover. This is just one in a series of articles dealing with the big days in the lives of people in various lines of work. Well, when you wrote the story about Marilyn Monroe, you had her picture on the cover. If you get into a bikini bathing suit, we'll put your picture on the cover. Now, look, look. Mr. Crandon, just stand there as you are, and we'll take the shot until you just come out, huh? Jolly, go ahead. <laughs> Well, that's all. I'm going back to the office. Okay, Charlie. Fine. Uh, see you tomorrow at City Hall. Uh, the commissioner's office. Yeah, it's 1230 sharp. Well, Mr. Cranley, can we finish this interview over a cup of coffee? Oh, well, I'd like to, but like I said, I'm waiting for my friend that I told you about, Ed Norton. He's oh. going to meet me here. Well, I guess we can do it here. Uh, Mr. Cranley, something you said struck me as being very strange. Now, uh, you've just won the award as the safest bus driver of the year, and yet you say that you felt that bus drivers don't get the recognition they should. Well, that's right. You see, uh, this award that I'm getting is a special award. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a, an award that's given out all the time. And uh, like cops and firemen, they get awards all the time. And yeah, I but... think that a, a bus driver is just as much of a public servant as they are. Yeah, but those awards are usually given out for bravery in the face of extreme danger. Now, uh, when does a bus driver have to show bravery in the face of extreme danger? When? All the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only the other day, a lady got on my bus. She's got a dog who must have been six foot high. It's one of those French poodles, you know, with the Italian haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> so she tries to get on the bus with the guy. I said, wait a minute, lady, you can't bring that mongrel in here. She says, what do you mean, mongrel? It's a pedigree. I said, I don't care what it is. Pedigree or a mongrel, it can't get in the bus. Well, uh, what did she say to that? She says, how dare you? She says, this dog is worth $10,000. Well, then what did you do? Well, he said, if he's worth that much, let him take a cab. <laughs> How's the uh, celebrity? All ready to go home now? <clears throat> yeah, pal. Oh, by the way, uh, this is Mr. Martin from Universal Magazine. This is my friend, Ed Norton. I oh, was yes. telling you about How, How do you do, do that? that? Well, I'm glad to have the chance to ask you some questions, Mr. Norton. Well, if the category is Ralph Crampton, I'm uh, willing to take a shot at the $64,000 question. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Now, to begin with, your close friends? Well, I am um, as close as anybody can get to Ralph Crampton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, known each other for a long time. Now, tell me, how long ago did you meet? Oh, I'd say, uh, 150 pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're a riot, Norton, a real riot. Uh, Mr. Norton, tell me something. What, uh, what kind of work do you do? Well, I, uh, I'm employed by the city. I see, in a white-collar job? No, you'd say it was, uh, more of a white-collar job. <laughs> I'm a, uh, underground engineer. Oh. He, uh, works in a sewer. <laughs> That's a layman's way of putting it. Well, Mr. Norton, tell me something. Have you ever ridden in your friend's bus here? Oh, yes. I ride my friend's bus every opportunity I get the chance because I'm assured of a comfortable, smooth, safe ride. Mm -hmm. And besides that, he lets me ride on the bus for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry Charlie left. I'd like to have gotten a picture of you two together. Oh, well, if you want to get a picture of the two of us, uh, just be at the commissioner's office tomorrow. My friend is going to be there to see me get the award. Yeah, you betcha. I wouldn't let my old buddy boy be there receiving a big award, the biggest day in his life without me being there. I'll be there. <laughs> and by the way, uh, our wives will be there, too. You can well, take a picture fine. of them. Tell me something. How about the women? Are they close friends, too? Oh, they're inseparable. Well, that's fine. Well, Mr. Cranley, according to my notes, you're, uh, you're very consistent. No, 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 you're steady. That's it, steady. Hey, wait a minute. That's the angle I'll feature in my story, your steadiness. Now, 14 years at the same bus company, happily married, and all of you good friends throughout all those years. Oh, well, the four of us get along like uh, the three musketeers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you and your wives tomorrow afternoon at the commissioner's office. Okay. Mr. Norton. Nice to meet you. Mr. Cranley. Glad to have seen you, Mr. Pleasure. Martin. Thank you. See you, man. All right. Good report.
Well, I don't mind telling you one thing, Ralph. I'll tell you, I've been worrying all day long. What a day I've been putting through. What are you worried about? What am I worried about? This is the last day, this is the last day before you receive the award. You've gone all this time with no accidents. Now, I mean, what, uh, what would happen to you, the thing would happen, you get an accident. That's the logical thing to happen to you and ruin the whole thing. That's ridiculous. One day is just the same as another to me. Well, I don't care. Just for safekeeping, when I got up early this morning, I crossed both my fingers on both hands. And it's not easy working a shovel this way, I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, Ralph. Oh, hey, Saint Arthur, Fred. Hey, yeah, uh, tomorrow's a big day, huh? Yeah, Fred, and you're just the guy I want to see. Huh? What about? Well, I got to go down to the commissioner's office tomorrow, and I'm bringing Norton and his wife, and I'm taking Alice with me, and I'd like to go in class. Would you lend me your car? Well, let me see. Uh, I'm working tonight. Clemens will give me a lift home. I'm going to sleep all day tomorrow. I don't see why not. Here, oh, got the key somewhere. Swear, Here's the key. Car's in the parking lot down the street. Thank you very much, Have buddy. a great day, Ralph. All right, pal. Well, well, I'll leave it in the parking lot for you tomorrow. Fine, we'll thanks. Oh, buddy. He's all right, that guy. Yeah. Hey, you know what, Ralph, I was just thinking. Hey, you know, there's, there's a lot of good drivers in the bus company. You've dri been driving out for 14 years without an accident. I mean, how come some of the other fellas haven't been able to do that? How, how do you account for that? Well, Norton, it's like everything else. A group of men are picked to do a job, trained in the same fashion as each other. There's always one man in the group that stands out far in front of the others. Yeah, I guess you're right there, Ralph. If you stood out any more in front, you wouldn't be able to get behind the wheel of a bus. <laughs> Let's go home, Norton. <laughs> for you, Ralph. Why do you have to hide everything? Ralph, will you please relax? Now, here's your tie. All right, will you hurry up? We're gonna be late. Are you sure this tie is gonna match my new jacket? Ralph, I wouldn't have picked it out if I didn't think so. All right. Will you hurry up and get dressed? Ralph, I could have been dressed a long time ago if you'd only let me alone. Now, will you do me a favor? Just calm down and stop being so nervous. I am not nervous, Alice. I am not nervous. <laughs> You're just saying that to make me nervous. <laughs> All right, you're satisfied you got me nervous now. <laughs> Alice, I don't know. I don't like the way these shoes look. Where are my other ones? They're at the shoemakers, Ralph. Well, you took them there last night. Aren't they ready yet? <laughs> Ralph, will you be reasonable? He couldn't possibly have finished them this fast. He could if he paid more attention to fixing shoes instead of the grand opera. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your shoes. They look perfectly all right to me, Ralph. They're fine. Sure, they look fine to you. Well, they don't look fine to me. Never mind all of that. How do you like my new dress, Ralph? Very nice. I certainly hope it'll look well when they take the pictures. It'll look fine. Now, will you hurry up? We gotta be there at 12.30. Ralph, uh, yeah. our laundry didn't come back yet, uh, and I'd like to have a, a handkerchief for uh, the breast pocket of my new sport coat. All right, there's some handkerchiefs in the top drawer. How about this one? It's one of my new ones. Remember, just wear it in the pocket. It's for showing, not blowing. <laughs> what are you doing? I can't make a knot with this thing. It's made of silk and a knot won't stick. Well, you're nervous. Here, wait a minute, wait. Right. Hey, let the old sailor show your hair now. Now, wait a minute, just hold still. You want a big knot or a small knot? I don't care, just as long as it's a knot. Just hold still and don't be so excited. Wait a minute! <laughs> trying to do, choke me to death! Just trying to help you, that's all. Now you spoil the knot. I'll spoil your head in a minute. Why I ask you to do anything for me? Oh, hi, Ralph. And, honey, what have you been doing down here so long? I'm all ready. I've been helping uh, Ralph there tie his tie. All I got to do is put on my jacket, and I'm all ready. Oh. oh, Ralph, Ralph, is Alice ready? I don't know what she's doing in there. She's been dressing for three hours and a half. Will you come on? Oh, well, if I got to wait, I might. <laughs> hey, Ralph, what? how do you like my new dress? 
Sorry. Didn't I see you wearing that before? <laughs> you, you, you couldn't possibly. I just bought it. Mm -hmm. I like it, Ralphie Bly. That's an exclusive creation. Oh, Evan, will you please go up and get your jacket? I'm going, I'm going. Hiya, Trixie. How do you like my name? Trixie! Hey, don't those dresses look alike? <laughs> alike? They're like the Bobsy twins. Trixie, how could you do this to me? What are you talking about? You know perfectly well what I'm talking about, Trix. I told you I was going down to Bloom Gardens to buy this dress. I described it right down to the smallest detail. You mean I told you. Trixie, you know that I described this dress to you first. Shoe was on the other foot. Are you going to start on the shoes now? <laughs> now, wait a minute. There's nothing wrong with wearing the same dress, is there? What? Well, look. It's very simple how to fix this whole thing up. One of yours will have to take the dress off and wear something else. Yeah, but which one? I guess you better go upstairs and change your dress, Trixie. Mine fits. I'm... I'm wearing this dress. I'm wearing this dress. Well, I'm not going if she's wearing it. I'm not going if she's wearing that dress. Oh, but... What are they doing? Look, Ralph, uh... You know, it's better make plans, go there without us. You know how I'd like to be there to see you get the award, Ralph. Look, Norton, you gotta go up and talk Trixie out of taking that dress off. I'm too young to die. <laughs> Here it is, the biggest day of my life, and everybody's ruining it. Oh, look, look, Ralph, I'll do it. Only for you. I wouldn't do it for nobody else, but I'll do it for you. Into the valley of death rides the 600. <laughs> Alice, will you come out here? I want to talk to you for a minute. No use, Ralph. I'm not going to change my mind. Alice, are you going to tell me that you're going to let 14 years of friendship between you and Trixie be broken up over a dress? Yes, if it's the same dress. Everybody's going nuts. This is ridiculous. Ralph, how do you think it's going to look when the pictures come out in the magazine and there I am standing right next to Trixie in the exact same dress that she has on? Every woman who sees the magazine's going to laugh at me. Is that all you're worried about? All right, when I start to take a picture of us, I'll step right in front of Trixie. No, Ralph. Oh, you realize we've got to be there in a few minutes, Alice? I'm sorry, Ralph. You'll just have to go without me. Go without you? All the fun in receiving the award, Alice, is having you by my side when they give it to me. Can't you understand that? All right, Ralph, I'm sorry. I guess I was just being selfish and childish, like you said. I'll go in and change my dress, Ralph, and I'll be right out. Sweetheart, you're the greatest. Alice, Alice, could I speak to you a minute? Trixie, I'm awfully sorry for the way I spoke to you before, and I've decided I'm going to go in and change my dress, and I'll be right out. No, 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 now you wear the dress, and I'll keep my raincoat on, buttoned up like this, and nobody even know we have identical dresses on. Oh, and Alice, I I'm awful sorry for the silly things I said. Oh, that's all right, Trix, but really, it isn't fair. I don't mind. I'll go in Alice, and will you shut up? <laughs> I'll let it be this way. She'll wear the coat, you'll wear the dress. I'm going in and put on my jacket. Will you tell Norton to get ready? You hit me right down here. Trix, are you sure you don't mind? Of course not. Oh, Alice, we've been through too much together to let a silly thing like this come between us. We certainly have. Oh, Alice, I don't know. I, I just think that dress is just wonderful on you. Well, you know, something that looks awful cute on you, too. <laughs> Well, are we ready to go? You look very <laughs> sharp. Thank you, Norton. You. Yes? All right, yes. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> you sneak. <laughs> I am not going out of this house till you take that coat off. <laughs> So do I. And you were big enough to say, Norton, you wear the jacket. I mean, I owe you. You like the jacket. You like the looks of it. It looks good on you. It was nice, but you let me wear it because you're a friend of mine, and I want to thank you, and I appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome, Norton. I, I admit, I got the build for it, but this particular type of garment is... All right, Norton. Now, let's get going. Come on. Ow, ow. Oh, what? Gonna, what? I'm, I'm going to have to go upstairs. Oh. What'd you do? Well, I just took a step, and my heel came loose. If I take another one, it's going to fall off. 
This is a plot. It's a plot. This whole thing is a plot against me. Everybody's plotting against me. We're late. All right, Ralph. Just go and bring the car around while we wait for Trixie. That'll save time. Yeah, I'll hurry. No, so, hurry. Get your hair fixed. I know that. how she hurries. Come on. Give me the keys. I'll go get the car for you. What do you mean, give you the keys? Give me the keys. I'll get the car for you. You're driving to the safe award dinner. You're a little nervous and you're upset. Let me get the car. I'll show for you. I'll drive it for you to be better off. Are you trying to put the jinx on me? No, I'm not trying to myself. put the jinx on you. Will you please leave him alone? He's a little jumpy. I know. That's why I offered to drive the car, take the strain off his nerves, that's all. Well, he'll be all right. You know, Ralph. It's just that this is such a big day for him. Well, I know it's a big day. Going down there to City Hall, getting the award, meeting all the muckety mucks, the commissioner, the mayor, the uh, Universal Magazine interviewing them all. <laughs> I know. Just between you and me, Ed, I'm a little nervous myself. Well, you This could mean a lot to Ralph's career, you know. Certainly it could. Hey, uh, I wasn't going to mention this, but somebody I heard down at the bus company, somebody said that uh, somebody had an idea of putting a plaque on the front of Ralph's bus saying, you are now driving in the world with the world's safest bus driver, Ralph Cramden. Oh, a plaque like that. Ed, you can tell me, who got the idea? Ralph. Oh. Well, I'll be very glad when we get there. Boy, so will I. What is keeping him, anyway? <laughs> what do you think that was, Ed? I don't know. I'm afraid to look. It can't be, Ed. It just can't be. Why don't you look where you're going? Look! <laughs> it's your fault. My fault. I had to find a way. Why don't you learn how to drive? Look what you did with my car. Your car? How about my car? Oh. Oh, boy. Ed, I feel very oh. faint all oh. of a sudden. Oh. All right, take it easy. Take it easy, easy now. Alice, sit down and rest. Wait a minute. Uh, I'll be right back. You pulled over. Lucky thing I had another pair of the same cup. Hey, oh, boy. What's the matter? Ralph had an accident. Oh. I'll find one. I'll find one. Yeah, go ahead and find a cop, because I'd like to see one. You're going to be sorry for this. I'm going to be sorry. Are you kidding? Where did you get your license? In a raffle? <laughs> I'll show you. Helen, you wait in the car. I'm getting a policeman. Go ahead and get a policeman. I want a policeman, too. Wait a minute. There's nothing, nothing in the world that you want less than a policeman. Don't you realize that? What are you talking about? This wasn't my fault. Well, a policeman will get here. He's got to make a report. Though. When he goes over the accident, makes a report, gives it to the paper, newspaper reporter gets it. I can just see the headline. So what? What's wrong? Safe award drive winner on way to receiving award has accident. <laughs> All right. Well, what am I going to do? Well, just settle a thing here. You pay for the scratch you put on his car, and you get Freddie Muller a new fender. Hey, that's right. That way nobody will be any the wiser. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. Why, yes, it's because there's never a policeman around when you need him. Now, look, pal, <laughs> what are you getting all upset for? <laughs> yeah, well, it's your fault. <laughs> Who cares whose fault it was? We don't need a policeman. We don't need a cop to set Liz. Listen, look, all I did was scratch your fender. Now, look, I'll pay for it. Yeah. I swear to hold it. Yeah, well, it's a good thing for you that I'm in a big hurry. Otherwise, I'd make you go to the police station. Drivers like you are a menace to the community. You're absolutely right. Now, uh, do you want to take my name and address? Yeah, well, I can only repeat that you're very I'll fortunate the that whole I'm such thing a big with you Monday. hurry. Yes, no, I'll make you settle right now. What's your name? Ralph Cramden, K R A M D E N. 328 Chauncey. Yeah, That's a sensible way to settle me. things. Okay. Well, at least it turned out okay. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Dirty old. <laughs> that, kills that kills me. It was not my fault. Look, just don't get upset. You're getting all upset now. Let's calm down and look nice when we go down there. It's no sense in getting upset. Now listen, the, the, the boys in the sewer there, when we get upset, we got a little model, a little saying that gives us a little comfort and time of need. Maybe I can pass it on to you. May I favor you with this little ode? <laughs> when the tides of life turn against you, and the current upsets your boat. Don't waste those tears on what might have been. Just lay on your back and float.
be right here. All right, gentlemen. They'll be right here in a minute. They're on their way up now. Just relax. Come on. Here they are. How are you? Right over the way, please. All right. Over this way. Over here? Right. right. Mr. Cramden, is any particular type of pose you'd like? Oh, we're going to take a pair. Oh, yeah. up. all right. Uh, see, uh, <laughs> oh, you want to arrange it? You can arrange it yourself, sir. Oh. Arrange it? All right. Just My get close hat. together. My hat look all right, Ralph? Huh? My yeah. Hat? Hot day, right. uh, how are you? <laughs> what are you, uh, profile? A little closer, please. Yeah. Hat. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, folks. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Ah, that's Thank you wonderful. Much. Thank you. Mr. Cramden, I want to congratulate you. And the city is proud of your record. Thank you very, very much, sir. Yes. Oh, by the way, Mr. Cramden, uh, I'm very sorry that the commissioner won't be here himself to give you the award, but uh, he was taken down with a sudden attack of the flu. Well, who's going to oh. present the award? Well, I've arranged to have uh, Judge Lawrence Norton Hurdle uh, take the commissioner's place. Judge Hurdle? That's right. <whistles> Holleran Hurdle. <laughs> Holler and Hurdle. Yeah, he's a traffic court judge, famous for his $50 fines and 50-minute lectures. Oh, yes, that's right. That's, he, he's very strict about traffic offenders. But there's nobody in the world he admires more than a careful driver. Well... He said he'd be very honored to give you the award. Thank you very much. Yes, now uh, I'll get the judge. Oh, by the way, after you get your award, I'll take you upstairs and let you meet the mayor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. I'll you to meet the mayor, I'll tell you that. His <laughs> Honor, Judge Hurdle. <laughs> Is this the man who gets the award? Hum na hum na hum na hum. Judge, uh, is something wrong? Well, 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 Mr. Mr. Cramden and I were involved in a traffic accident a few months ago. Accident? Uh, hum na hey, yeah. well, 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 now wait, wait, wait until you hear the whole story. I was under the impression that the accident was Mr. Cramden's fault, that he uh, didn't put out his hand to make a right turn. But on the way over here, my wife informed me that he did put out his hand and that I failed to see it. Well, for a very good reason, because it, unluckily I was wearing my reading glasses instead of my regular glasses. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, the, yeah, so the accident is my fault. <laughs> and to keep the record straight, I'm fining myself $50. <laughs> Don't forget the 50-minute lecture. <laughs> Cramden, it gives me real pleasure to present to you this award as the year's safest bus driver. <laughs> boy, Ralph, good boy in there. Thank you. Uh, may I uh, say thank you very much in uh, presenting me with this award. I know that I am not uh, worthy of it, but still I would wish to accept it on behalf of all the other bus drivers in the the country who drive uh, <laughs> buses. I, uh, glad to see that people realize that a bus driver hasn't got an easy job of it. And that the safety of the public is always the uppermost things in their mind. And once again, I want to thank you, and you, for presenting me with this. And thank you, fellas, for taking the pictures. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go upstairs with my wife and my friends and meet the mayor. Yes. <laughs> this way. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, hey. Nice speech. Bye. 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 Something shut up. I can't get in upstairs. Do you want to wake up, Alice? Fix you got the chain on the door. That's not my problem. That's your problem. Well, it so happens that it is your problem, too. If Fixie finds out I come in at 2 a.m. in the morning, Alice is going to find out that you came in at the same time. We're in this together. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I figured I'd use your window, go out in the fire escape, and go upstairs there. The only chance is that Trixie left the window open. Go ahead, but don't make any noise. All right. Is stuck. Let me open it. Be careful.
careful when you open that. I knew a guy once got his finger caught in a latch and it hurt like anything. Just Will you let me handle it. <laughs> ah! Ah! <Ooh. laughs> All I can say, it's a lucky thing I was here to stop you from yelling and screaming. You would have woke up the whole house. If you weren't here in the first place, I'd never hurt my hand. Well, the latch is open. Go ahead and don't make a sound. What you walked. What do you want? Wear your rubbers tomorrow morning. It looks like rain. What do you think you're doing, Ralph? Oh, well, I, I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd get up and get a glass of milk. <laughs> I like the pajamas you're wearing. <laughs> Ralph, do you know what time it is? Yeah, it's a little after 11. You're right. It's three hours after 11. <laughs> do you realize, Ralph, that you've been out almost every single night this week? And I stay alone at home here alone while you're out of that crazy lodge having fun with the fellas. Having fun with the fellas? Having fun with the fellas. <laughs> that shows how much you know. Just so happens that the Raccoon Lodge is going through a financial crisis. And I'm the treasurer, Alice. I'm responsible. If I don't get some money into that treasure, you know what might happen? The Bensonhurst chapter of the Raccoon Lodge may no longer be. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Real estate values in Bensonhurst will go up 100%. <laughs> 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 Zoom. <laughs> I'll tell you what it really means, Alice. It means that I failed my job as treasurer. And I don't care how hard I have to work, and I'm not quitting until the job is done. I'm getting money into that treasury. You'd have plenty of money in the treasury, Ralph, if you all didn't waste it on childish things. Childish things? Where do we waste any money? How about $35 for this Admiral Dewey sport jacket? <laughs> Oh, you're gonna get it, Alice. You're gonna get it. What do you want now? Can I sleep on your cot? Listen. Trixie caught me. I was sneaking in. She tried to slam the window down on my head. She's a regular Madame Guillotine. <laughs> Fine couple of wives we got. Trixie won't let you in. My wife won't let me out. Well, I, I hope by tomorrow they forget about it. That's all I hope. I don't care whether they forgot about it or not, Tamara. Tamara, I'm playing pool with Bert Wiedemeyer. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute. On account of the way the girls are feeling, do you think it's wise to go out tomorrow night? I don't care whether it's wise or not. I'm not breaking that date with Bert Wiedemeyer. The whole thing going down at the bus depot says that he's going to be the new general manager. And if he's going to be general manager, I'm getting on a good side of him. But well, all I know is you're going to have a tough time convincing Alice that playing pool with Blake Wiedemeyer is going to help your career. Don't worry, I'll convince him. Wait a minute. Uh, I got it. Let's take the wives with us. To the pool room? Certainly not. To Bert's house. Well, I thought Bert wanted to play pool. No, it was my idea to play pool. At first, he wanted us to go over to his house. You know, he thinks a lot of you as well as he does me. But I thought that would be a little stale, so I was the one that suggested playing pool. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I get it. I, I go along with you. That's a good idea. You kill two birds with one stone. You spend the evening with Blake, and the girls have a night out. And not only that, I just thought of something. Well, I got the perfect way to get on the good side of Bert. Oh, through his wife. You know, he just got married. And ever since he's been married, every day he starts to tell me how wonderful his wife is. She's good looking, he says, and she's this and she's yeah, that. Yeah. Well, all I have to do when I walk in is flatter her a little bit. You know, compliment her. That's Tell it. her she is lovely and she does look beautiful and she's a nice housekeeper and everything. Certainly. I'll have that bird eaten out of my hand before the night's over. Yeah. 
And I'm going to go along with you. I'll cooperate. I, 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 what more can I do than promise than that then I'll be my usual charming self? <laughs> Edward? Come on upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finn, 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 Trixie, Finn. I'm guilty. Wait right. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll explain this whole thing, Trixie. But first, I'd like to get Alice out here. <laughs> Alice, sweetheart, do you mind coming out? I'm warning you, this had better be good. There's nothing to worry about, uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, Alice, Trixie, I, I would like to say a few words on behalf of Ralph and myself. We admit that it was wrong that we come home at 2 a.m. this morning, and we came home uh, late last night, uh, Friday night ditto, and Thursday night when uh, we were playing. Uh, oh, what uh, Norton is trying to tell you girls is that we apologize. And we realized we were wrong, and to make everything up, we're taking out the whole crowd of you girls tomorrow night over to Bert Wiedemauer's house to meet his wife. Bert Wiedemeyer? Who's Bert Wiedemeyer? He's a friend of mine. Works down at the bus depot. He just got married, and this is a perfect chance for us to go over and get acquainted with him. We'll have a lovely evening. Well, I now, don't I don't want any Ralph. excuses. We're all going tomorrow night, and we'll have a ball. Well, I'm a little tired now. I think I'll hit the hay. Good night, Trix. Good night, Thornton. I'll see you later. All right. Hi, Ralph. I'll be right in, Ralph. Well, night, Alice. Uh, Trixie, will you come along, please? Don't be late. I'll be right up. I want to talk to Alice. Oh, Alice, you know as well as I do. All they're interested in is getting together with that Bert Wiedemeyer. The only reason they asked us along is because they know we won't let them out of the house alone after what happened tonight. Yeah, you may be right, Trix, but something tells me we should go anyway. What do you mean? Well, I've been thinking, Trix, and maybe the reason the boys go out so much at night and don't pay any attention to us anymore is our fault. Oh, fault? Well, sure. Do you remember the days when Ed and Ralph wouldn't dream of going anywhere without us? Sure. That was before we were married. Exactly. Now, the whole reason that it happened then was because we used to knock ourselves out to be attractive and to look glamorous for them. And they paid plenty of attention to us in those days. I get it. Alice, the watchword is glamour. We're going to dress to the teeth and make a fuss over the boys. Then they'll treat us like they did before we were married. That's right. And tomorrow night, Trix, we're not going to be wives. We're going to be dates. Yeah. Oh, I'll wear my new blue satin. Oh, it's a knockout. Hey, what, what are you going to wear? I'll wear my green dress, because Ralph's never seen me in that. Ooh, wonderful. Hey, uh, Trix, you got the key to the front door. I left it open. Well, it ain't open now. Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, <clears throat> when you slammed the window down, did you lock it? No. May I escort you home? <laughs> Ladies first. Watch it. Good. I'll tell you, Alice, going home like this reminds me of that old poem I used to love in my childhood. When he crept out into the stealthy night air, little did he realize the fire escape was not there. I'm just I'm I'm the I'm 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 I, uh, I smell something burning. Uh, I think it's the cookies. Will you take care of the twinkles? I'm dressing. Okay, all right. I'll take them out of the oven, then. Fine. Oh, hiya, Bert. Oh, hiya, Bert. Hiya, pal. Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. You'll, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, something's burning in the stove. Uh, just put your coats in the first room down the hall. I'll be right with you. Okay, Bert. Hey, <laughs> nice guy, isn't he? Let's oh, get rid of our coats. Oh. Oh. Well, whoever said the age of chivalry is dead was right. And I know the two guys have killed it. Oh, Alice. Our campaign has been a complete flop. On the way to the bus, they walked 20 feet ahead of us. And they only talked to each other. And if that isn't bad enough, on the bus there are just two empty seats. And who sits in those two empty seats? Frau. <laughs> well, you can't expect miracles, Trix. I figured it would take a little time. A little time? Alice, I didn't even notice our new dresses. Well, we were hurrying and rushing, and we threw our coats right on over them. Believe me, they'll notice our dresses now. But your quarter, they don't. It's a bet. Well, I want to tell you, that's really living. Ooh. A spare room just to play cards and watch television in. <laughs> Let me tell you, if they had an icebox in there, it'd be a perfect setup, huh? Yep. 
Why don't you girls take your coats off? Ralph. <laughs> what? Don't you notice anything? Your stockings are crooked. <laughs> don't forget the quarter you owe me. Boy, this is someplace, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry I had to leave you that way, but uh, it couldn't be helped. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Bert. You know, you really got a great place here. Oh. I'm telling you, it's fixed up real good. Well, thanks a lot, thanks. Uh, my wife picked out everything herself. Your wife? Yes. Are you going to stand there and tell me that your wife decorated this thing here? <laughs> you know, I would have made a bet that a professional interior decorator come in here and did all this. That's right, that's right. But, I mean, there's only one word that I can uh, find to describe this place. Suave. <laughs> yes, well, as long as nobody's going to introduce us, I'm Alice. Oh. I'm Trixie. Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Grabden, Mrs. Norton. Oh, <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Grabden, Mrs. Norton. Oh, oh, say your coat's here. I'll take them for you. Uh, my wife is dressing. She'll be out in a moment. <laughs> take the pocketbooks, too. Oh, <laughs> surely. Fine, I will. Thank, Thank you, you very you much. Get out of this one. will be toting it all over the place with her. <laughs> well, can't you put your pocket down for five minutes? Always carrying it. Thinks you get a big load or something. Well, there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, when Mrs. Wiedemeyer comes out, it might be good if you complimented her on how she decorated this place. That's right. You know, she might give you a tip on how to fix up our place. Yeah, I can sure use her help. I just can't make up my mind what color pan goes best under our icebox. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, these hell oh. off. <laughs> Boy, they have me fooled. They're real. <laughs> I mean, they're almost as good as the artificial ones. Uh, nice, huh? Oh, I'm sure glad we could all get together tonight. <laughs> we should have done this a long, long time ago, you know? You're right about that, Bert. Oh, you know how... sing, sing. Here's my wife. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Look lovely, darling, lovely. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is uh, Mrs. Cramden, Mrs. Norton. Uh, Mr. Norton, Mr. Cramden. Yeah. Uh, well, nice to meet you. you. Uh, Mrs. Wiedemeyer, pardon me. Shelley. May I say, when your, your husband started to tell me about you when you just got married, I thought that he was bragging. But after seeing you in person, I can truthfully and honestly say that his words were inadequate, to say the least. Oh, well. <laughs> Mrs. Wiedemeyer. Shelley. Sure. I'm very happy to meet all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now that uh, everybody knows everybody, why don't we sit down? Hmm? Good oh, thinking, Bert. Good, good, good. all right. Uh, uh, well, uh, I must say that that is a lovely dress you have on. I noticed it as soon as you came through the door. <laughs> to have husbands who notice our clothes. Yeah, they sure are. <laughs> well, I'm pretty lucky, too. I have a wife who every time she gets something for herself, she gives something to me. Well, I want to say, Mrs. Wiedemeyer, that that's very thoughtful. It's not many wives who want to give their husbands something. Oh, I don't know, Ralph. I've been thinking of giving you something. <laughs> and you may get it real soon. <laughs> You can pick up some wonderful things at the Millman shop, Mrs. Cramden. Really? Hey, now listen. Why are we being so formal? Let's cut out the last name, shall we? <laughs> oh, all right. That's right, Bert. <laughs> Bert sounds so strange to me. I haven't called you Bert for years. Well, uh, Bert's his name, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you see, we have pet names for each other. Uh -huh. Pet oh. names for each other? Now, isn't that cute? I bet you that was your idea. Yes, it was. <laughs> Don't you have certain names you like to call your husband? <laughs> oh, I have several I'd love to call. Him. All you have to do is pick your husband's outstanding feature and find a name that fits. <laughs> oh, I see. Isn't that a good idea, Tubby? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Tubby? Tubby? That's a perfectly darling name. Do you think so, Mrs. Wiedemeyer? Oh, I like it. 
Boys at a pool will love it. I just can't seem to smoke a cigarette unless it's in a holder. Oh, now let me get you a match here. I, I, I have a torch. I have a torch. Such gentlemen. <laughs> Look, uh... Look, folks, uh, we, we, we skipped our dessert at dinner. Thought you might like to have it with us. I wouldn't dream of having it without you, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about it, kitten? Shall we serve the uh, cookies and coffee now? That's a good idea. You know, if Twinkles didn't remind me about food, we'd never eat. <laughs> All our friends say we live on love. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it in. Oh, well, let me I'll help you, Let me help you. Let me help you. Really, there's no need to bother. Perfectly all right. This way we can bring it all in together. <laughs> what a husband you have. He certainly is a treasurer. A treasurer? <laughs> if he keeps this up much longer, he's going to be a buried treasurer. <laughs> Let's talk about it tomorrow. I've got to get out of here. I can't take any more of this. Oh, well, I need an excuse, Trix. Yeah. Headache? Yeah, headache. All right. We'll do it as soon oh, as they come boy. in. Well, I want to tell you, I've seen some two-tone kitchens in my day, but that is a beauty you have in there. Now, may I add, Bert, that you have a sensible-sized refrigerator there. <laughs> Oh, leave it there, the cattle get it. <laughs> leave it there, the cattle get it. Leave it there, the cattle get it. I heard him. I heard him. <laughs> By any chance, uh, Mrs. Wiedemeyer, did you make these cookies? No, Twinkles made them. I didn't have the time. I was at the beauty parlor all day. Well, one hasn't got time to do everything, has one. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, sugar and cream? Uh, no, thank you. I really don't care for any coffee. Well, uh, how about some tea or a glass of milk? Well, no, thank you. Nothing for me at all. I've, I've suddenly got the most splitting headache. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I get you some aspirin? Uh, no, thank you. I don't get these attacks very often, but when I do, the best place for me is home. Oh. Yes, if that's right. I've seen this happen before, and we've really got to go. When you get a home, Trixie, make sure she goes to bed. <laughs> We're all going home. Oh, you know, I, I sympathize with you, Alice. I get those headaches once in a while. I know how bad they can get. I'll, I'll just get your coats. Thank you. Oh, Charlie. Thank you, Bert. Well, I certainly did enjoy having all of you over. It's been a lovely evening. Thank how you. could it be otherwise with a hostess such as you? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wiedemeyer, may I echo those words? Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. I'm sure you'll feel all right in the thank morning. You. Oh, Sometimes morning. these things go away just like that, you yeah. know. Good right. night, and thanks for uh, everything. Here we are. Thank you. Good night. Good Thank night. Thank you. Good night. We'll have to do this again real soon. How about tomorrow night? <laughs> Come on, Ralph. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And uh, before going, may I say... Ho, ho! <laughs> Good night, Bert. And, Good uh, night. Say, uh, you mind if I had uh, one for the road? A drink? No, no, one of those cookies. <laughs> Oh, I do like a short cookie, but you do make them short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, well. Alice, honey, I'm home. Big boy. Hi, Alice. Oh, I thought this day would never end. Oh, I'm so glad you're home at last. <laughs> Alice? You've been at that rum candy again. 
who needs rum? It's you who go to my head. You intoxicate me. Don't give me that. You've been eating that candy. Who needs food? We can live on love, right? Kiss me. Now, can you compare pot roast to that? I must be smeared. I'll go fix my lipstick. I won't be gone long, killer. I call you killer. Because you slay me. And I'm calling Bellevue because you're nuts. Come on, here. Now, look, Alice, you're doing something, and I want to know what it is. What do you mean, Ralph? You know what I mean, smoking that thing, acting like this. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to be the kind of woman you admire, Ralph. What do you mean, the kind of woman I admire? I oh, saw... look out now. I saw the kind of woman you admire, Ralph. I watched you. Oh! I watched you all last night being so attentive to a woman that you admire. A woman who, in my opinion, is silly, self-centered, and takes terrible advantage of her husband. But if that's the kind of woman you admire, that's the kind of woman that I'm going to be. And it's going to be terribly easy for me, Ralph, because I'll spend all my days at the beauty parlor and shopping for dresses. And when I come home here at night, you'll be waiting for me with the same kind of flattery that you gave Rita. Rita? Rita? Is that what's bothering you? Well, I'm a laugh. Well, let me in on it. I'd like a laugh, too, you know. Are you nuts or something? I don't care about it. Did you think that I like Rita? I was just throwing the old charm on her to make a hit with Bert. He's going to be the general manager down at the depot, and I want to get in good with him. Well, that may explain your being so attentive to Rita, Ralph. But it doesn't explain something much more important. It doesn't explain why in all these years, Ralph, you've never tried to make me feel like your sweetheart or even noticed how I looked. I wish you had an explanation for that, Ralph. Oh, how I wish you had an explanation for that. I have got an explanation for it. I'm a mope. <laughs> but I love you, sweetheart. Honest, I do. You're the greatest. Oh, Ralph. <laughs> I live and breathe a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Hi, Norton. Hey, Dan, what do you say, Ralph? Just a minute, I'll be right with you. I'm gonna make an entry in my bird-watching book here. I just seen a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Bird scene, yellow-bellied sapsucker, place where seen, Central Park. I tell you one thing that bothers me. They're not supposed to be within uh, 3,000 miles of here. Well, how do you know it's a yellow-bellied sapsucker? Don't forget, last week you saw a robin with a wishbone in its mouth. You said it was a chicken hawk. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm sure it's a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Why are you sure it's a yellow-bellied sapsucker? <laughs> what else could it be? He's got a yellow belly and it was sucking sap. <laughs> I don't know why a man of your age watches birds. Why shouldn't I watch them? They watch me, don't they? <laughs> The only bird that watches you, Norton, is a woodpecker. I don't have to run of the litter. <laughs> Look, Norton, I asked to have lunch with you in the park because I got something very important I want to talk to you about. What? I want you to do me a favor. What do you want? I don't know, but somehow or another, I made a mistake in the bus today, and I made the wrong change. I must have given somebody a $20 bill for a dollar bill. Now, I got to turn in my receipts to the cashier at 5 o'clock tonight. Will you lend me the money? Look, Rob, it's not that I'm against lending you money, and you can do anything you want with it. It's just what you don't do with it. What don't I do with it? You don't pay me back. <laughs> Look, Norton, don't lend me the money. All I want you to do is invest $20 in it. What do you mean, invest? I'll tell you what I mean. Norton, let's face it. I'm a man with big ideas. And sooner or later, one of those ideas are going to catch on. And when they do, I'm going to be a big shot. And do you know what happened to people who become big shots? Yeah, they forget their relatives. 
No, Norton. They incorporate. They incorporate. I'm going to become a corporation. Do you know what a corporation is? Yeah, I know what a corporation is. When a person or a group of persons duly authorized to sell, distribute shares, become involved with the intention of the stockholders grouping about together with those shares, with the intention of selling the shares, comes to an evil interest there. How did you know that? Ever hear Merrill Lynch, Spears, Pierce, and Bean? <laughs> yes. I got an office right outside of downtown sewer I work in. <laughs> well, I'm glad you know what a corporation is, Norton, because then you'll understand what a great opportunity I'm offering you when I tell you that I will send you a percentage for $20, a 20% percentage of the Ralph Cramden Corporation. I like that. Trixie forgot to catch him. Of course, I can't give you too much stock. I can only sell you a few shares, but, well, I still think you'll make a profit on it. Well? Well, isn't it appealing to you? No, don't. I don't like liverwurst without ketchup. <laughs> Will you stop with the liverwurst? I'm talking high finance. Look, for $20, you get 20% of all the money I make over and above my salary. Listen to me, will you, Ralph? My mother didn't raise no stupid children, you know. I work hard for the money I earn there, down in that sewer. It's no easy job, you know. Some days I get it right up the head. <laughs> if I'm going to invest my money in any, any proposition, believe you me, it's got to, it's got to, it's got to make sense. It's got to have a sound, logical, business foundation. Only then will I make the plunge, as we say in the trade. Martin, I'm very happy to hear you speak like that. You sound like an intelligent man. And that's exactly the type of man that I want my corporation to be vice president. And if you give me the $20 and get 20% of my corporation, I am making you the vice president. Hmm. Me a veep? <laughs> now you're talking sense. Wait a minute, pal. Here. Here's the 20 bucks. Thank you. And I certainly am lucky to get a man like you for vice president. Uh, I say that this calls for a toast. There you are. Thank you. To the corporation, Ralph Cram, the president, Edward L. Norton, vice president and chairman of the board. Wait a minute, hold it. Hold it, don't move. <laughs> boy, Joe, what is another yellow belly sapsucker? <laughs> boy, oh boy, two yellow belly sapsuckers in the same day. Boy, I ought to phone the society about this. What makes you believe anyone is going to believe you when you tell them you saw two yellow bellied sapsuckers in a park? where they're not supposed to be within 300,000 miles of. Wait a minute, Rock. You got a point there. But I know how I can fix it. Birds seen two yellow-bellied sapsuckers. Place where seen Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certainly lucky to get a man like you to be my vice president, Martin. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. Boy, you're always burning something there. If it ain't your finger, it's my food. <laughs> it's no joke, Ralph. I'm only kidding, sweetie. There, does it feel better now? No, it doesn't. I'm telling you something, Ralph. That stove is a booby trap. One of these days is gonna blow both of us to smithereens. If you are hinting that I should buy a new stove, you'll have to get a better idea than that. Now, look, get to work on the old stove and cook my new supper. You can cook your own <laughs> new supper. Don't think your attitude scares me, Alice. I'll get my own supper. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> hey, there, Ralph. What are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm getting my own supper. Uh, Alice isn't feeling too good, so I'm doing her a favor. <laughs> Well, uh, <clears throat> Ralph, I uh, wanted to have a little talk with you about the corporation. I've been vice president for about a week now, and uh, you ain't shown no profit. <laughs> I had a, a stockholders meeting with myself, and uh, I come to the conclusion that I'm getting a little impatient. 
Haven't you got any business ethics? How can you interrupt the president of the corporation while he's eating? All right, I'll wait till you're through. Ralph, uh, could I have a banana? Go ahead. Ain't got no bananas. Could I have an apple? Go ahead. Ain't got no apples either. Could I have an orange? <laughs> Go ahead! <laughs> I haven't got any oranges either. You want a peanut butter sandwich? I don't like peanut butter. I like apples. <laughs> or bananas. <laughs> or oranges. Hey, uh, what kind of peanut butter is that? Is that the crunchy kind? Yes, it's the crunchy kind, and I can prove it to you. When this jaw hits your head, you'll hear a crunch. <laughs> Don't get excited, will you? Remember, you're talking to the vice president of Ralph Cameron and Incorporated. All I'd like to do is eat in peace. Go ahead, who's stopping you? Fine thing for a president of a corporation to be eating. Peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> you ought to be eating something to stick to those fat little ribs of yours. Would you mind leaving this apartment and going back upstairs? All right, all right. I'm going, but I, I got this to tell you. I'm going to leave your corporation in a state of bankruptcy. I'm withdrawing my $20. You told me that every time you turn around, I'd make money. Well, so far, you ain't been exactly no pinwheel. <laughs> I thought the whole thing over, you know. You got a corporation, I got 20% of it. I got 20% of nothing. How can you get rich on 20% of nothing? Is that what you're beefing about, 20%? All right, you got 30%. It's 35% or nothing. It's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> Rob, I, I hope I didn't offend you, Ralph, but uh, you know, the way I drive a hard bargain, I gotta watch out for my interests. I gotta admit, you put it over on me that time, Norton. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Ralph Camden? Yeah. My name is Frederick Carson. I'm an attorney. An attorney? My firm is handling the estate of the late Mary Monaghan. I suppose you'll remember her. She used to ride on your bus. Mary Monaghan. That's the old lady I used to help on and off. She used to get on a bus for years. I didn't see her lately. I was wondering what happened to her. Gee, yeah. that's a shame. Well, she didn't forget your kindnesses. She remembered you in her will. Now, the will is going to be read tomorrow, Friday morning, at 10 o'clock at her apartment. Will you be there? Sure, I'll be there if you want me to. How come a poor lady like that's making out a will? Well, she wasn't exactly poor. Wasn't? No. Her estate was valued at roughly $40 million. <laughs> See you Friday. How about that? Uh. <laughs> $40 million! Alice! Alice! $40 million! I'm inheriting $40 million! What happened? He fainted, can't you see? Fine thing. Guy in hers, $40 million, and he faints. <laughs> what am I saying? 35% of that belongs to me. Why must you hide things where I can't find them? Where's the shoe polish? In the top left-hand drawer. It's not in the top hand, left hand drawer. It must be there. It must be, huh? It must be. It must be, but it's not. Don't always say it must be, Alice. What you mean is maybe, not must be, maybe. Must be it. Maybe. <laughs> you and your snide remarks. Ralph, will you calm down a little bit? If you don't take it easy, you know, you'll be a nervous wreck by the time that will is read. I am not nervous, Alice. I am not nervous. I may be a little excited, inheriting $40 million, but I am not nervous. <laughs> Nervous, 
Ralph. You're not nervous at all. You just read an Esquire where the well-dressed man always polishes his socks. <laughs> Ralph, I know you're a little bit excited. But after all, the will hasn't been read yet. We don't know how much she's leaving you. What do you mean we you don't know? You keep talking about millions, Ralph. It may just be hundreds. What are you talking about, hundreds? She's leaving $40 million, as you see. Said in the papers this morning, she's only got one other relative. One living relative. A nephew. And she doesn't like him. The paper said she had no use for him. Ralph, that's her own living relative, her own flesh and blood. He might contest the will. Contested? Contested? Ha, 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 Hardy, ha, ha. What do you mean, contested? Did he ever help her off a bus and help her on one? You may not realize this, Alice, but in a few hours, I am going to be a very rich man. Ralph, all I'm saying is don't count your chickens before they're hatched. And remember, Norton gets 35% of those chickens. Don't worry, I can take care of him. What do you mean? Ralph, you wouldn't cheat Norton out of his share. Of course not. I'm not going to cheat him. Just going to try to do what's best for everybody. You know how people act when they get a lot of money? They go nuts. <laughs> you know how Norton is. He's the nervous type. He'd really go nuts if he got his hands on anything. First thing you know, he'd quit his job in the sewer. Next thing he'd do is buy clothes, buy automobiles, yachts. Start taking a tour around the world, drinking champagne, eating caviar. First thing you know, he wouldn't come home. Poor Trixie pleading with him, please come home, Norton. Him laughing at her. That'd be a nice thing, wouldn't it? After all she's done for him, pleading for him to come home and him laughing at her. Well, if you think that I'm going to do that to such a nice girl like Trixie, you're crazy. <laughs> No, I uh, already had breakfast. How about a second breakfast? I already had that, too. It'd be kind of ridiculous to have three breakfasts, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll uh, start on my first lunch. <laughs> hey, Alice. Oh, yeah. Norton. Ah. I'm glad you're here. I want to talk to you. Hey, listen, listen, listen. It's getting late. We'll talk on the way down to the Monaghan Mansion. We'll talk on the way. You don't think for one minute that you're going to the reading of the will with me, do you? Well, of course I'm going, Ralph. You'll need me. You don't think of the small details, the little things. For instance, did you happen to think of that? And what is that for? The small details, Ralph. You can't come away from that place with $40 million in your pocket. You've got to have something to carry it in. <laughs> Yeah, there's the vice president talking. Well, are you sure that a bag will hold $40 million? A bag like that? Yeah, this will do the trick. Is that so? Why don't you make sure? Why don't you run upstairs and cut some paper money into the shape of dollar bills and see if they'll all fit in there? <laughs> the small details. Yeah. Is Trixie upstairs? Yeah, she's upstairs. She's waiting till I get back. We are going to make a trip that I have always wanted to make. A trip? Yeah, now that we're getting into the millions, uh, I'm going to do something that I always wanted to do. Going on a second honeymoon to Niagara Falls, only this time we ain't hitchhiking. <laughs> I'll just run up and see tricks. All right. Come on, Ralph, will you snap it up? I'm anxious to collect that 35% of the $40 million. What do you mean, collect it? What do you mean, collect it? You can't take that money out of the corporation. It's got to stay in there. That's what a corporation is for, to put money in and let it grow. Look, this has grown enough. 35% of the $40 million belongs to the stockholders. This is only the start. Look, as president of this corporation, already, from just $20 you gave me, I'm already making you millions. Money Look, you got to leave it there. you got to leave it in the corporation. Then I invest it. Then I reinvest it. And then re-re-reinvest it. Well, before I finish with you, pal, I'll have you out of that sewer. $40 million, 35% of it belongs to the stockholders. Will you stop saying $40 million? It's not $40 million, do you know? When you inherit $40 million, do you know how much you have left? Let me give you an example. 35% belongs to the stockholders. Will you stop saying that? Now look, this piece of paper represents $40 million. All right, I inherit $40 million. Right away comes federal income tax. Then comes the state tax. Then comes the city tax. 
then a few miscellaneous taxes, then you have to pay for the lawyers, and that is what is left of forty million dollars. <laughs> Thirty-five percent belongs to the stockholders. Come on. Come on. Come, fortune. Eat your breakfast. Come now, fortune. You've got to eat, you know. Is everything ready in here? Mr. Carson is going to read the will. Everything's ready as it will ever be. But I'm worried about Fortune Bascom. He isn't eating. Oh, poor little dear. He misses Mrs. Monaghan. Come, Fortune, eat your breakfast. Come. Ah, there's the doorbell. It must be that Mr. Cramden that they are expecting. Mr. Carson and the others have been waiting. I'll tell them you're here. Thank you very much. How do you do? Hey, 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 look. Today I seen a parrot. Oh, will you stop that? <laughs> now, look at Morton. I'm telling you now, and I'm telling you for the last time. Don't embarrass me here. Can't I even look around? All right, but don't touch anything. <laughs> what a grouch. Boy, how about this place? This is real class, huh? Oh, dude. Bet you they spent at least a hundred dollars on the furniture in this room alone. Sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Ralph, look. Uh, I bet this guy had a rotten barber. <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Carson? I'm sorry I'm late, but I was taking care of my corporation. <laughs> we were about to start without you, but oh, there uh, are some things that just can't wait. <laughs> like we say to sewer. Time and tide, wait for no man. Uh, um, uh, this is my uh, business associate, Mr. Norton, Mr. Carson. Uh, this is Mr. Bradley, Mrs. Monaghan's nephew. Oh, uh, so you're the bus driver. I'm yeah. very glad to meet you. Uh, no hard feelings, of course. <laughs> you know how fickle fate can be. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> well, if we'll all be seated now, we'll get I on with it. Yeah. This shouldn't take very long. This will is quite short, and there's no question as to its legality, so I shall skip the technicalities and get right down to the bequest. <clears throat> to Herbert Bascom, my butler, for his many years of faithful service, I leave the sum of $50,000. <laughs> Sorry, a little habit I picked up watching the quiz shows. <laughs> <coughs> to my maid, Mary O'Donnell, I leave the sum of $25,000. <laughs> Some people are never satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> to my nephew, Robert Hilliard Bradley, who by his gambling and philandering has shown himself to be utterly incapable of handling money, I leave the sum of one dollar, <laughs> which will undoubtedly be promptly deposited with his bookmaker. I uh, hope you pick a winner with it. <laughs> please, please, may I continue? Certainly. <clears throat> to Ralph Cramden. My favorite bus driver, <laughs> I leave my fortune. I'm rich! 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 Please control yourself. Rich, I'm sorry. I came so sudden, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Ralph Cramden has shown himself to be kind, sober, courteous, and conscientious. And to such a man, and only such a man would I entrust my fortune. But rich, 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 Please, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Now, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. Sir. To such a man and only such a man would I entrust my fortune. I therefore direct that immediately upon the reading of this will, Ralph Cramden take possession of my fortune. Get the bag. Ask him. <laughs> 
children, this is fortune, and according to the will, you take immediate possession. <laughs> Carson, uh, am I to understand that this is the fortune? Yeah. Look at all the As you know, we are gathered here for a very sad occasion. We are throwing this farewell party for one of our brothers, Brother Saxon here, who tomorrow night is walking the last mile. Duh. <laughs> because tomorrow night at this time, Brother Saxon will be a married man. Duh. Now I think it only fitting and proper that we call on Brother Saxon to say a few words now because this may be the last time he ever has a chance to open his mouth again. I, uh, I know... You fail already. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Go ahead, brother. I know that all of you brothers must have been joking about the things you said about marriage tonight. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you ain't married yet. Wait till tomorrow, huh? <laughs> You are a riot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, I think it only proper that being he's going to be a relative of mine, shortly, I should say a few words at such an occasion. Gentlemen, I am sorry to say that I feel very sad tonight because I am largely responsible for the predicament that he's going to be in starting tomorrow. <laughs> you see, I introduced him to my sister-in-law, Agnes. So it is obviously my fault because you can see that he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm very happy. You hey, uh, that proves it. He's stoned. <laughs> well, there is a silver lining to this cloud. However, I think that I end up with most of the silver in this cloud. <laughs> you see, he's marrying my wife, Alice's sister. So therefore, he is going to have the golden opportunity of sharing that sweet, dear old mother-in-law of mine. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, gentlemen, it's hot tonight. <laughs> With your kind indulgence, Brother Raccoons, I'd like to propose a toast to Brother Saxon. A toast. Here is to you, Brother Saxon. May your life be rosy and bright. If you'll take the advice from an old married man, you will get out of town tonight. <laughs> And now, Brother Raccoons, now that the dinner and the speech-making is over, I propose that we go into the club rooms for a little entertainment. <laughs> Stanley, you look a little frightened. Well, don't worry, we're only kidding you, pal. Married life's a great institution. It's all how you look at it. Are you, Agnes, all set up with the apartment? Well, uh, not yet, Ralph. Uh, we won't need one for a while. You see, when we come back from our honeymoon, we're going to move in with Agnes's mother and father. Your what? We're going to move in with Agnes's mother and father. You can't do that, Stanley. You'll be making the biggest mistake of your life. Take it from me, I know. When Alice and I got married, we moved in with them, you know. Just for a short while, till I got on my feet and got straightened out. They were six of the most miserable years I ever spent in my life. <laughs> you won't be allowed to make one decision by yourself. And they'll keep telling you that you're only a guest in the house. Oh, I don't know, Ralph. They seem like nice people. They seem like nice people? Sure they seem like nice people. Now they seem like nice people. Boris Karloff seems like a nice guy when he stands on an Red Skelton show, too, you know. You ever see him at Frankenstein? That's the real Karloff. <laughs> 
And you'll meet the real relatives when you move into that house. But it's too late now, Ralph. Agnes has already made up her mind. Agnes has made up her mind? Agnes has made up her mind? <laughs> Agnes has made... What's the matter with you, Stanley? This is the USA, the 20th century. She made up her mind. <laughs> Who cares if she made up her mind? Don't forget, you are the king. Because a man's home is his castle. And in that castle, you're the king. Hey, hey. You're the king of your castle. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, but Agnes was... <laughs> Agnes was very definite about it, Ralph. I, I don't want to argue. Well, if you don't want to argue, what are you getting married for? <laughs> Stanley, if you take my advice, tomorrow afternoon when Agnes says I do, that is the last decision you allow her to make. From there on in, show her who wears the pants. Now. A little toast to Stanley. All right. Who is the king of his castle. To the king, to the king. <laughs> that live in this house certainly kill me. You think they never saw anybody in a top hat before? Oh, they're just jealous, Ralph, because you look so good. You can say that again. I was just thinking, Ralph, what a beautiful bride Agnes made. Yeah, she did it that. Well, why shouldn't she? She's been practicing for 20 years. <laughs> I never saw a dame so anxious to get married in all my life. Ralph, how can you talk like that? Agnes had plenty of chances. Stanley wasn't the only one who wanted her to get married. There were plenty of others. Oh, sure there were. Sure there were plenty of others. I can name three myself. A mother, a father, and a caterer. I didn't mean that, Ralph, and you know it. My pearls are caught again. Yeah. Agnes was just waiting for the right fella to come along. She was waiting for the right fella? <laughs> waiting for the right fella. Did you see what she did at the reception? Threw away her bouquet, and from force of habit, she ran and caught it herself. <laughs> She didn't, huh? No, her foot slipped. Her foot slipped? Wish my foot could slip like that. I'd be playing center field for the New York Giants. All right, Ralph, that's enough about Agnes. She's married now, and she's very happy. Yeah, you're right, sweetie. She is happy. She sure is in love with that Stanley, too, and he's in love <laughs> with her. That's the main thing. It's like you and me, see? We have arguments and everything, but you know that I love you, and I know that you love me. That's right, sweetheart. That's all that counts. I'm gonna make some coffee, Ralph. You want some? Nah, I'm tired. I didn't think that reception was gonna last that long. I'm going to bed. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna put this in a box. The first thing in the morning, take it back to McLeod's. Because if I heal one minute after noontime, I gotta pay a whole day on it. All so right. take it right back. I will, Ralph. she doing here? Please, Ralph. Agnes and Stanley have just had a terrible fight. A fight? Already? At least we waited till we got on a train. <laughs> oh, Stanley's a beast, Ralph. He's a beast. I don't know what ever came over him. He was such a nice, quiet man. Anything I said he thought was wonderful. And now he's a, he's a, he's a beast. <laughs> well, what did he do? Well, after the reception, he, he just changed. He suddenly started talking crazy. He said, we're not going to move in with Mother, and that he was king of the castle. And then he said, <laughs> something, something crazy, something like Boris Karloff, 
dancing on the Red Skelton show. <laughs> Don't this be the 20th century? Why, Ralph, what do you suppose made Stanley change like this? Well, you're asking me, Pa. How do I know what made him change? I think I had something to do with it. Don't be silly, Ralph. It's just that he's a friend of yours. Alice, can I stay here for the night? I'm too ashamed to go home to Mom and Dad. Now, wait a minute, Agnes. You're married now, and no matter what, your place is with your husband. Oh, he's a beast. I never want to see him again as long as I live. Well, as long as you feel like that, maybe you better stay overnight. I tell you what, you and I can take the bedroom and Ralph can sleep out here. That's right, sweetie. You go ahead in there. Wait a minute! Look on where I can sleep where? Oh, all better beats! Please, Ralph. Now, that's enough now, Agnes. I'll loan you one of my nightgowns and you better get right to bed. Oh, dear, there's only one left. The rest are in the laundry. I tell you what, you take this and I'll wear a pair of Ralph's pajamas. Oh, thanks, all right, Miss Dorothy Dix, fixer of marriage problems. Fix my sleeping problem. Well, why don't you bring the cot up from the cellar? I can't, because the cot is busted in the cellar. Well, Ralph, can't you sleep on something out here? Sure, I can. Sure, bring the bed from in there, put it out here, and I'll sleep out here. Don't worry, there's plenty of places to sleep here. Yeah, I can sleep in a sink if you want me. Not only can I get a good night's sleep, but I can wash up at the same time. <laughs> Even sleep in the oven or in the icebox. I got it. I'll sleep with my head in the oven, my feet in the ice. <laughs> then I'll have a hot head and cold feet. Just to break the monotony, I'll switch around every hour or so. Ralph, it's only for a night. Now, by tomorrow morning, Agnes will see things differently. This is a very crucial point in their marriage, Ralph. Why? If we send her back to Stanley now, she may never get over this. Well, why must we always get people together? Why doesn't somebody get us together? Why do I have to sleep in the kitchen? Well, Ralph, if you don't want to do that, there's only one other thing that I can think of to do. Well, if you got something else to do, tell me and we'll do it. All right, we'll just uh, put our coats on, get dressed and go over and talk to Stanley and find out what made him change and started this whole thing. All right, let's go. We'll go over and we'll put it to him. What made you... <laughs> go ahead to bed. Ralph, let's... you just said... Go to bed. <laughs> I got a big mouth! Gotta do something about this mattress, Alice. It's murder. <laughs> you don't have to get up yet. I'll put the coffee on. I'll go in the kitchen. <laughs> Suits, too, if you want to. Hey there, Rocky boy. What's the word? Well, I guess Agnes and Stanley are up in Niagara Falls now, huh? Yeah, well, if Stanley's up there, he's up there alone. She's here. Agnes is in the bedroom. Agnes is here? They had an argument, a big fight right after the reception. Boy, let me tell you something. I, I, I heard of husbands and wives taking separate vacations. The first time I ever heard of separate honeymoons. <laughs> Not on there, honeymoon. They had a fight, I'm telling you. She's got to get out of here. Well, now, look. Is she going to leave here or is she going to stay? 
I'm afraid she's not going to leave, Ralph. And the way she's talking, she never wants to go back to Stanley again. She never... What, do I got to sleep in the kitchen for the rest of my life? Please, Ralph. She's going through a terrible ordeal right now. She's going to come out here any second. Now, please, whatever you do, don't do anything to upset her. Now, just try and say something pleasant, something that might cheer her up a little bit. And you too, Ed. Oh, no. well, Alice, you can count on me. <laughs> oh, well, don't you look nice, Agnes. Yeah, <laughs> boy, you look nice. Well, ha, ha, ha. Hello, Agnes. By the way, I ain't seen you since the wedding. Congratulations. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, Alice said to be cheerful, didn't she? Oh, it's not his fault, Ralph. It isn't, huh? Well, something's got to be done, and she's got to get out of here. I'm telling you that. What did they fight about? Well, why don't you tell me? Maybe I can think of something. What no, did they, they fight about? Ed, that is the strange part about this whole thing. You know what a quiet and mild person Stanley's always been all his life. Well, do you know that right after the wedding, he changed? Well, nobody knows what happened to him. They got in an argument over moving in with my mother, and he absolutely refused. Then he started to rant and rave and carry on about how he was going to wear the pants in the family, uh, and he was king of the castle, and how hey, man hey, is the hey, boss hey, in his hey. own... Oh, wait a minute. King of the castle? That strikes a bell. Now, wait a minute. King, I heard that... Why something. don't you go home? Oh, no, wait, no, wait a minute. Let's wait. Let king of the castle. I heard that someplace. Now, just a minute. I'll if I can think of where I heard it, it may clear up this whole thing. King of the castle. I got it right in the back of my head. <laughs> What'd you do that for? You said you had it in the back of your head. I was trying to get it out. Who cares where you heard it or what it was? It doesn't make any difference what kind of an argument we had. Our problem is to get her back with him. I got it. I got it. First of all, she thinks Stanley's a beast because he started to boss her around, right? right. Want to be the master of the household, the head of the whole thing? That's why she thinks he's a beast, right? All we have to do is make Agnes believe that all husbands are that way, and she'll think he's normal, and she won't think he's a beast. What are you talking about? Look, tonight we invite Stanley over here for supper. We don't tell her anything about it. Now, I'll come home from work. As soon as I come in, I walk right up to you, and I'll start giving you orders. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And you say, yes, sir, and no, sir, and do all that. And she'll see what goes on. She'll realize how husbands are, and she won't think Stanley's a beast. Good, 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 good. I, I, I can help out, too. I'll come downstairs a little later, and I'll say that I gave Trixie some orders to do, and she did them because she agrees with me that a man is boss of the house. Eh? Beautiful. Oh, <laughs> it's the silliest thing I ever heard of. It is? Well, have you got a little better solution to this? Go ahead. Tell me about it. We'll do it. Well, that part of it's just plain crazy. I will admit, it's not such a bad idea getting the two of them together here you for dinner. You bet your life it's a good it idea. And it'll work. Mark my words. Take it from me. Just listen to him. Listen to him, will you, Alice? Because a man is king of this castle. A man is boss of the family. I, I think I know where I heard it, Ralph. The king of the castle. Get out! Get <laughs> What's the matter with you, Ralph? What did you chase him out of here for? I just don't want him around here, that's all. Now, about tonight. We'll have some roast beef, mashed potatoes. We get some peas and carrots. Yeah. Make some of that cake. Excuse me. I just wanted to tell you one thing where I heard that line about King of the Castle. I heard it in the Robin Hood motion picture. Richard the Lionhearted said it to Friar Tuck. you were setting the table, I would have helped you. Oh, that's all right, Agnes. I'm almost finished anyway. You set four places. You having company? Well, I was going to tell you anyhow, Agnes. Come in. Stanley! Agnes, sweetheart. I oh. knew this would happen if you just saw each other. Oh, Stanley, I'm so happy. I never should have left you, not even for a minute. Can you ever forgive me? Forgive you? It was all my fault, darling one. I should never have talked the way I did, sweetheart. I never should have listened to Ralph. <laughs> well, well, that's all past now, sweet face. We're together again, and that's what counts. Uh, Stanley, what was that you just said about listening to Ralph? I never should have listened to him, Alice. The other night at the bachelor party, 
He was telling me I should lay the law down about moving in with Agnes's mother and father, and that I should let Agnes know right away that I was king of the castle and, and boss of the family. How dare he interfere like that? Oh, I knew it couldn't be Stanley's fault. It's all your husband's fault, Alice. Oh, just wait until he gets home. No, oh, he's a beast. Well, I see that you're home. <laughs> I didn't think you'd get here so soon. Back together again, eh? I'll uh, be with you in a minute. Now, look at here, Alice. As you know that this is my house, I can't see why we should have any discussion as to your understanding when I tell you to do something. Now, you know it's my house. You know that I'm the master of my house. And being the master of my house, I'm the one that gives the orders. I gave you an order. The master gave you an order this morning. But as I look around, I see that my order from the master wasn't carried out. Now, the master's wife is supposed to obey. Why didn't you obey and have my robe and slippers laid out so that when I come home from a hard day's work, they're there for me to slip into conveniently? Tut, tut, none of your feeble excuses. <laughs> I can see that you're ashamed of yourself. The master forgives you. I'll not say another word about it. Just run in there, get my robe and slippers, and I'll call the whole thing off. The master has spoken. <laughs> Why don't you blow away? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Don't talk to the master like that. I win you. Here we get it. Ralph Cramden, how dare you interfere in their marriage? Putting all those crazy ideas into Stanley's head. He has just told me everything that you told him at that bachelor party. I might have known it was all your fault, Ralph. I shouldn't have listened to him, sweetheart. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Stanley. He's been a troublemaker ever since he got into our family. <laughs> well, Ralph, I hope you're satisfied. Hi, hello, folks. Hey. Hi, Stanley. So you're still here. I want to talk to you just a little while. First, I'd like to talk to you, Alice. Trixie said that uh, you wanted her to go to the movies with you tonight. Well, she can't go to the movies tonight. You know why she can't go? Because I said that she can't go. No particular reason. I said that she can't go, and I am the boss of my house. Oh, Stanley. Oh, Agnes. <laughs> Alice, I had no idea it worked so fast. <laughs> you uh, mind leaving the premises? <laughs> All right. I see that it's another, another one of your well-calculated plans that went to pot. it again with my big <laughs> I learned a lesson though this time. A real good lesson. If there's anything a man or a woman shouldn't do, it's get mixed up with somebody else's marriage. It's tough enough for young people to get along today with somebody butting their nose in, telling them how to run it. They can do it. Everybody else has done it. They need no help. Nobody. Do this. Do that. Do it this way. Do it that way. They can handle the whole thing by themselves. We did it. We had our arguments, but we settled them ourselves. And you know why? Because there was nobody around to pick and pick and pick at us. That's why. Imagine me telling somebody how to run their marriage. You know what I'd do if anybody tried to tell me how to run our marriage? Ho, ho. Bang, zoom. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry. That's all right, Ralph. Baby, you're the greatest. <laughs> Check 
Packing new installation. Bensinghurst zero seven seven four one. Okay, thank you. Everything's in working order, Miss. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Trixie, this is Alice. Yeah. Guess where I'm calling you from? No. No, I'm home. In my apartment. Yeah. I got a phone. Just now. Oh, Trixie, it's the most beautiful phone you ever saw. It's black. <laughs> yeah, rush right down and see it. Okay. After 15 years, how did you ever get Ralph to change his mind? I didn't. He doesn't know anything about it yet. You mean you had this phone put in without telling him? That's right. Yeesh. <laughs> well, I just had to do it, Trix. You know, every time the bus company wants to get in touch with Ralph, they've got to send a man over here. Oh. And ever since my mother moved out to Astoria, I just haven't been able to get in touch with her at all. Mm -hmm. So I had to have a telephone, but the only trouble is, I don't know how I'm going to break it to Ralph. <sighs> if I could just get him in a good mood before he sees it. Well, you better get him in a good mood while he's still out in the hall, because he's going to see that as soon as he comes through the door. Yeah. I know. I'll hide it. <gasps> yeah, good idea. All right in here. Yeah, that's well. Then I can wait, you see, till I get him in a good mood, and then yeah. I'll tell him about it. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> okay, Trix. Well, hiya, sweetheart. Hiya, dear. And how is the charming Mrs. Norton? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I'll see you later, Alice. I'd better be going. Bye. All right, Lovely girl, that Trixie. Oh, Ralph, I'm so glad you're in a good mood, because there's something I just got to tell you. Oh, hey, before you tell me anything, let me tell you something. You know that guy that works down, he's uh, a bus driver down at the uh, depot, Joe Lustig? Uh-huh. You know, the guy that's always making those stale jokes about me being slightly overweight? Mm -hmm. Well, last night he goes home to dinner, see, and he sits down. As soon as he sits down to eat, the telephone rings. And they want him to come down and take some guy's place who's sick, you know, take over the shift. Well, he gets on, he says, I don't want to do this. He starts complaining and beeping, you know, he says, it's not my turn. Well, whose turn was it? It was my turn. But because we haven't got a telephone, they can't get me. So he had to go down and take over the shift. Imagine that. I get out of all the dirty work because we haven't got a phone. <laughs> well, anything to eat? Yeah. I'll get you supper for you right away, Ralph. All right. Uh, what did you want to tell me? Oh, that? Uh, I took your blue pants to the cleaners. Oh, fine. Well, I'm going in and wash up. I'll be right out now. All right, Ralph. Oh. <laughs> did I just hear a telephone? A telephone? Oh, yeah, I, I hear I I know. It's the window's open. Could have swore it was right in this room. I heard it sound that way. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I have to listen to other people's telephones. <laughs> you didn't close the window all the way. No, it isn't. You have the wrong number. <laughs> All right, Ralph. Kill me. Alice, that phone is going out. If you'll Ow! calm down for one minute, I'll give you a dozen good reasons why we need that phone. Yeah, and I'll give you a big reason why we can't have the phone. We can't afford it. Oh, Ralph, a telephone isn't a luxury anymore. It's a necessity. A necessity, huh? They put this in this afternoon. I'll guarantee you've been on it 30 times already. I made one call, Ralph. One call. I spoke to Trixie. Trixie? Upstairs? <laughs> you call her on the phone to talk to her upstairs? <laughs> What's the matter? Yelling out the window is too good for you now? What was it, raining out? Yelling out the window is bad manners. Don't you make any nasty remarks about my mother. She's been yelling out the window for 80 years. Yeah, and before she lost her voice, there were more people listening to her than to Amos and Andy. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Ralph. That phone is staying here. Everybody but us has a telephone. All you're worried about is the money. Well, you can just stop worrying, because I'll figure out some way to pay for that phone. I'll just, uh, well, I'll, I'll cut down on something. I know what you'll cut down on. My food. <laughs> That's what you'll cut down on, Alice. 
Well, it's my food. We'll have a phone, but I won't have anything to eat. Oh, Ralph. Don't old Ralph me. I'm sick and tired of hearing that old Ralph. The bills will get bigger and bigger, and I'll get less to eat. I'll start losing weight. Then you know what I'll look like? Yeah, a human being. <laughs> oh, well, you're gonna get yours. Listen, Ralph, if you just stop being so stubborn, you'd realize that we do need a phone. It is just as important for you as it is for me. Oh, it has nothing to do with me, because when I'm working all day, you'll be making calls. And then when I'm home at night, you'll be getting them. That phone is for you. You, you. Hello? Yeah. It's for you, you, you. <laughs> Hello? Shut up. Because he's a nut calling me up to congratulate me about having a telephone. <laughs> now, look, let's get something straight right now, right here and now. A man's home is just like a ship. And on this ship, I am the captain. I am the captain of this ship. Do you understand that? You are nothing but a lowly third-class seaman. That's all you are. Your duty is to get the mess, swab the deck, and see that the captain feels good. That's all you have to do. Remember, you're nothing but a lowly third-class singer. I'm the captain. Where are you going? Seaman Crandon, third class, is retiring to the poop deck until this big wind blows over. <laughs> hey. What's the idea of hanging up on me on the phone and just calling to tell you how happy I was that you finally come to your senses and got a telephone? Is that so? Well, that phone's going out in the morning. Look, I know a phone is a necessity, but you don't know Alice like I know Alice. She and her mother get together on that phone, that's the end of everything. If her mother caught a cold, she'd be on that phone 20 times a day just to say gesundheit. First thing you know, the neighbors find out I got a phone call. If they start coming in here, sponging on me, can I call this one up? Can I call that one up? Hey, uh, Ralph, that reminds me, can I use your phone? <laughs> Didn't you just hear what I said? Just one call. Is it an important call? Look, what, 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 what I ask you if it wasn't important? Go ahead, but make it short. Thank you. Will you make the call? Thank you. <laughs> Was that the important call you had to make? Well, isn't all the right time important? Besides, I didn't talk too long, did I? You're going to pay me for that call. You're going to pay me for that call. I hate to bring this up, Ralph, but you uh, leave me no other choice. In the past 15 years, you've used my phone a few times, you know. All right, all right. Don't throw that up to me. Just tell me how many times I use it, and I'll pay you for it. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> You owe me $176.30. Let me have that, and I'll check it with my fingers. Oh, no, you don't. What do you mean, no, I don't? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what was that? I'll tell you what that is. She wanted to find out if I'm still here. She can't wait to get on that phone and start gabbing with everybody. Of course she won't get on the phone. Don't be silly. She's going to run up a big bill when you go away or something. All right, pal. Well, make believe we're going out bowling. As soon as I get down the street, I'll duck into a candy store and make a call. I'll call this number, and I'll bet you $10 that it's busy. Benson Heights, 07741. Thank you. We're going bowling now, Alice. Be back later. hoping maybe you could help me. Oh, sure. What's the matter? Well, a friend of mine's babysitter disappointed them, and, and well, I was hoping you might know someone. Oh, gee, I'd love to help you out, but uh, I don't know anyone. See, uh, wait a minute. How much does a babysitter get? 
50 cents an hour, and these people only live three blocks from here. Mr. Simpson, I'll do it. Oh, that's fine. What's your telephone number? Well, have you got a pencil in there? Uh, yes, yes, I have. And here. Bensonhurst. Mm-hmm. Bensonhurst. Ben Bensonhurst. Zero. Zero. Seven, seven. Four, one. Four, one. And by the way, before I forget, since I don't want Ralph to know about this, could you ask your friends to call me before six? Because that's when he usually gets home. Oh, sure, I understand. Now, these people that you're sitting for tonight are the Bartfells. Uh-huh. And they live at 383 Himrod Street, uh -huh. apartment 4D. 383. I'll remember that, and I can be there in about 15 minutes. Oh, that'll be fine, Mrs. Cramden. How can I ever thank you? Oh, Mrs. Simpson, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. You tell them I'll be right over. Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> So you heard me coming, huh? Get off the phone. Ralph, I wasn't on the phone. Don't stand there and give me a bare-faced alibi like that that you weren't on the phone. I've been calling this number the last 15 minutes, and it's been busy. If I call Bensonhurst 07740 once, I called it 400 times, and each time it was busy. Bensonhurst 07740. That's right, and each time it was busy. Mm hmm Well, our number is Bensonhurst 07741. <laughs> I want to tell you something, Ralph. We've had our differences before. We've argued and we've fought and everything else, but everything was always out in the open. Each one knew how the other one felt. But this rushing in here like this, why didn't you just come in and ask me if I was on the phone? Didn't you think I'd tell you the truth, Ralph? Guess I had the wrong number. <laughs> I guess I married the wrong number, Ralph. <laughs> That's fine, Frank. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. How'd you like the show last night? Oh, great, Harvey. Just great. The wife and I have a date tonight. When I called her from the office this afternoon, she still hadn't found a sitter. Say, why don't you call the woman we used last night? Huh? Oh, she's very, very nice. Very, very good. What's her name? Uh, uh Alice Crandon. She lives right near you, too. Look, uh, uh. I'll give you her phone number. Hey, that sounds great. I'll write it down in my book as soon as I get out of the chair here. Great. All right. The other barber will be here in just a minute. OK, pal. Norton, are you sure this is going to work? Don't you think I ought to call her up and see if she's still steamed at me? Oh, no, I like this way better. Complete surprise. You walk in there with, her with flowers, candy, smooth shave. You know, the skin a woman loves to touch. It'll work. But suppose it doesn't work. What do you got to lose? You can smell the flowers, eat the candy. Tomorrow morning, you don't have to shave. <laughs> I guess maybe you're right. After I tell her she can keep the phone, that ought to please her. Certainly. Wait, wait, wait till she finds out that you're giving up the lodge meet tonight to take her to the floor show at the Hong Kong Gardens. You're a cinch. You're right. Who's next? That's me, pal. Here. Haircut? No, just a shave. What's the matter with you? Don't you realize that this is this pl man's place of business? How would you like him to come down to the sewer where you're working hard? Help himself to anything down there. Help himself to what? <laughs> sit down and read a magazine. Hey, Ralph. That's why. Well, 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 well. Will you sit down? <laughs> All done, Mr. Wallstetter. I'd better give you that phone number now, Harvey. Oh, that's right. Look, uh, do you think she's free tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, her husband's busy on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, you know? Just make sure you call before 6. Here you are. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Thing. The phone number is Benson Hurst 0 Got it? And her name is Alice Crandon. <laughs> Who was that guy? Wallstetter, Harvey Wallstetter. Harvey Wallstetter. Wait, 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 wait. Leave me wait. alone. I'm going to take him apart. 
Wait a minute, Ralph. Maybe he's talking about some other Alice Crampton. Another Alice Crampton? With Bensonhurst Zero? Remember last night you were wrong. Maybe you're right. But I gotta find out. Wait a minute. If you go home now and accuse her of anything and she's not wrong, she'll never forgive you. All right. But I just gotta go home and find out. I won't let on. Listen, I'll listen. walk in. I'll be cheerful, happy, right. The most pleasant. important thing of all, when you walk in there, don't let her suspect that anything is wrong. I won't. I'll be pleasant. I'll be smiling. Wait a minute. That'll be a dead giveaway. Why don't you walk in like you always do? <laughs> Leave me alone. Yes, Mr. Wallstetter. I have a pan pad and pencil now. Uh-huh. Four, six, five, Van Buren Street, apartment 3C. Uh-huh. Oh, dear, that's awfully early. You see, my husband isn't home from work yet, and I have to give him his supper. And I'll make it as soon as I can. Uh, 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 goodbye. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Well, who are you talking to on the phone? Oh, that? That was nobody, Ralph. That was the wrong number. Oh, wrong number. Uh-huh. Yes, you get a lot of wrong numbers now that you got a phone, huh? Yes, you'd be surprised. Uh -huh. Well, uh, your supper's ready. How about eating? I'm not hungry yet. You're always hungry as soon as you come home from work, Ralph. Yeah, I know, but I thought tonight I'd just sit down and relax a little bit before I ate. All right, you just relax. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> what is this big rush to get me to eat? Well, there isn't any rush, Ralph. I just know it's your lodge meeting night, and you always like to get there on time. Oh. Well, I'll go ahead and put my uniform on. All right. Uh -huh. Here's juice, Ralph. And come on over and... There you go. Better eat your soup while it's hot. It's too hot to eat. Oh, well, then you shouldn't eat it if it's that hot. Here, dear. There you go. What would you like for dessert, Ralph? Dessert? Yeah. Look, why don't you give me some cornflakes and cream and we can take care of tomorrow's breakfast, too, while we're at it. <laughs> what is this rush? Was I rushing you? Well, you rushing me. What have you got to do that you want me to hurry up like this? Well, all right, Ralph. I might as well tell you the truth. I know it's your lodge meeting night, so there's a movie that I want to see, and I just thought I'd catch the early show. Oh, you're going to a movie? Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you why. Maybe I won't go to the lodge meeting tonight. I'll go to the movie with oh, you. Oh, no, Ralph. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't disturb your going to the lodge meeting for the world. Besides, you wouldn't like this movie. What's the name of it? It's, uh... I don't know. Oh, you're right. I'd hate that one. Ralph, I mean, I don't know the name of the movie, but you know it's a love story. And I know you have no interest in love stories. Guess maybe you're right. Well, go ahead. I don't want to hold you up. Oh, you're a dear, Ralph. Have a good time. Thank you, darling. I will. I bet you will. <laughs> Norton! Norton! What do you want, Ralph? Come on down! Damn it! <laughs> what are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack or something! Make some noise when you walk in here. Where's Alice? Where's Alice? She went over to see Harvey Wallstetter. That's where she is. She told you that? Oh, no, she didn't say that. Made up some lie about going to the movies, you know. Didn't even know the name of it. What are you gonna do? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I got his address out of the telephone book. I am now going over and take him apart piece by piece. And when I finish with that snake in the grass, I'm going to tell Alice once and for all, that's it. I never want to see her again. I got along without her before I got married to her, and I'll get along without her again. I'll just say it's all over. It's through. Done with. Not. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I hope he doesn't lose her. <laughs> She's such a good cook. Well, 
Well, here's to you, Helen. May the next ten years be as wonderful as these have been. Hmm. Mrs. Crandon? Yes. Come in, won't you? Uh huh. I'm Harvey Wallstetter. This is my wife, Helen. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry if I've kept you. Oh, no, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. Look, sweetie, we better go. Uh -huh. All right, Mrs. Crandon, I'll uh, look and see if uh, Harvey Jr. is still awake. He's sound asleep. <laughs> You know, he always sleeps right through. You won't have any trouble with him at all. Well, I'll look in on him later anyway. Good. Have a good time. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't you think the shoe should be on the other foot? I don't have to ask you what you're doing here. Well, isn't this cozy cocktail time, huh? Well, where is he? Where is who? Where is Harvey? Harvey? Yeah, Harvey. I want to see Harvey. <laughs> Come on out of there, Harvey! <laughs> Come on, Harvey! <laughs> I know you're in there, Harvey! You're making a very big mistake. I am. Well, you see the mistake I make out of Harvey. <laughs> if you don't come out of there, Harvey, I'm coming in after you. <laughs> come on, Harvey. <laughs> you happy? You happy now you woke him up? What is that? That Harvey Wallstead, a junior. I'm taking care of him. You mean you're babysitting? That's right, babysitting. Come on, sweetheart. Go back to bed. Gee, I never knew Davy Crockett was so fat. <laughs> Guess I made a little mistake. You don't have to say anything, Ralph, because most of this was my fault. I never should have tried to hide it from you. I just thought that if I did a little babysitting a few nights a week, I could pay for the phone myself. That way, you wouldn't have the worry of the added expense. But I never should have done it without telling you. Ah, uh, you were right, honey. You're always right. It's just unfortunate that you got a clam like me for a husband, that's all. I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't think there's anybody that's got a better wife than I got. But I gotta run around acting like a maniac all the time. Screaming, accusing, yelling. I only do it for one reason. I'm so much in love with you that the slightest thing makes me jealous. Just thinking of you looking at another guy drives me nuts. Ralph, we have a phone now so you can call and tell me as often as you want. Baby, you're the greatest.